Hey, welcome to our Bible, no, not Bible recap. It is Bible recap. It's sermon, it's sermon recap. recap. It's, it's sermon recap. recap. See, I should get something from Tara Lee Cobble. I keep on mentioning her name and her, her podcast. Okay, it's sermon recap because what we do is we recap the sermon. Yes, we do. And it's Monday, so it should be fresh in our minds. It should be. Dan, it's a little tricky today because you were telling me as we sat down, you had a ton of notes and questions to ask. I did. I yeah. did. Actually, I, I remember now I had one part that was kind of a funny thing that I wanted to show everybody that I wrote down. Uh-huh. But I can't remember what it was. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> he lost his notes. So. There was a question that I had for you. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it was humorous? I thought it was going to be humorous, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, it could have been. It could have been about the dogs. It could have been. But if it could have been something about like your unhealthy love for the dogs. Like, like do we all agree that there's that this is unhealthy? Maybe that's a, that's a no, question I think for your group to discuss. Yeah, I, maybe it is. Because listen, <laughs> like from the time that I've known him, yes. he, he's gone from a dog hater. That's harsh. He, it, it, it's harsh, but it's true. Yeah. Because you used to like make fun of people who had dogs yes. and you it, hated all dogs. And, yeah. and, and, and you were kind of kind to people, but not even that kind. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I would have dogs by touching them like this. Yes. But, right. uh-huh. but then like behind their back and you, well, could, you just knew. I knew. I, okay. I knew. Yeah. But you work he with me for all that so, time. So okay. anyways, he's gone from that to like his dogs sleep with him. I didn't say they did. But they do. Let's, okay, moving on. Let's just let's get through this thing, okay? So, see, this, he doesn't have any notes. That's what he's doing now. This we is can a make distraction. Jokes the whole time. We can, but it won't help anybody. So, really? um, James chapter four, your Joy. favorite chapter. Laughing. It yes. is my favorite chapter. Yes, um, and we are right in the in the midst of some really powerful mm-hmm. verses. Um, mm-hmm. I was thinking, I was going to try to go through all the way, you know, to verses eight, and nine. And you said you were. I said I was, and I couldn't do it. I hardly finished what I had, but I, know, I yeah. thought next week, I'm already telling you next week, it's communion. Yeah. Draw nigh to God. God will draw nigh to you. That's Cleanse good. your hands and your hearts and purify and mm-hmm. weep and mm-hmm. mourn. And so mm-hmm. we're headed that way. But, but the crux of submitting to God, yeah. resisting the devil, he will flee from you. Um, yeah, that, that was, for me, um, the submitting to God was, was easy, I think. But, but in the context of... If I really do want to live a life that's peaceable and have wisdom, mm-hmm. I have to come under his complete control yeah. and not do things my way. It's not my will, my desires, my passions, my way, my future. It has to be his. Yeah. Amen. Um, do you know what I like about James here is that like he 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 hits hard, as you said, mm-hmm. right? And so it's like, what? where do wars and fights come from? Among, it's from your lust. It, it's yeah. your fault. You are adulterers and adulteresses. He's, he's like... And if you were in a conversation with somebody and they started talking to you like that, you would think they hate me. Yeah. And there's no hope for me and I'm terrible. And then he and then he like follows that up with um God gives grace. Mm-hmm. So humble mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. And then submit to God. There's always hope. There is hope. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, listen, you are messed up, but it's it's not over. Like right. you, you still have the opportunity to humble yourself. God will give you grace, and then you can submit to Him in His grace. Amen. And as you submit to God, you can resist the devil, and He'll flee from you. Because I think that those two things must be connected. And I think, like you said in your sermon, that the submitting to God must come first. It has to come first. Yeah. Right. Because you will never resist the devil if you have not submitted to God. No. And Kim and I were talking about this. About it seems like well. We should fight first, and then we're open to submit to him, but that's not the case. I have to be following his will, and then the target hits us yeah. on our back because we are doing damage to the enemy's domain. Yeah. And, and I think for some people, <clears throat> that might be a scary thought because he is a cruel enemy. But there is something about battling for righteousness, mm-hmm. knowing that I'm on the Lord's side, knowing that we win, and knowing that I am doing damage to his kingdom sure. by living out my life in a way that glorifies mm-hmm. God. Tara's brother Shane was here. Yeah. He loved that part. <laughs> oh, I like you talking, talking about warriors and stuff. Like, it was great. Do you know what someone said? What? I won't, even, I won't tell you who it was. Okay. They were joking. They said, it felt like a Trump rally. <laughs> <laughs> it I was mean, not. Okay, so I said this to him before. I don't think I've ever seen him preach uh, like okay. that before. Okay, he, was, go. he was on it. Okay, so anyways. Um, no, it's not good. No, no. Um, Pride comes before destruction, Holy Spirit before fall, and and pride is a terrible thing. Well, if and you so want, I can, I'll humble you later. Okay, thank you. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> um, 
No, but but the idea of the the battling, right? That that mm-hmm. there is an excitement that we know that we can be shot out like mm-hmm. arrows into this world mm-hmm. and really make a difference. And and if you think the battle is the government, then you've missed the whole point. It's principalities and powers, right. and we're we're battling against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is that is a place that we need to be clear, right? Yeah, we have like to the be. whole idea of being a warrior. What does that look like? Are we fighting for justice, true justice? Mm-hmm. Are we fighting for the kingdom of God? Because right. I have some boys who they're they're willing to fight, but most of the time they're fighting it's because they were wrong, they're selfish, they're right. You know, that's probably my heart. It is my it's heart. in our, all of our hearts, our right? Hearts, yeah. Um, one of the things I thought that we had kind of just skipped over here, but um, that whole idea of submitting to God mm-hmm. and before you'll ever stand, like I think that is at the crux of so many of the counseling conversations that I have, of the men's group meetings that we have. Mm-hmm. We're talking about. Um, I just was talking to somebody else last week and they were kind of like, oh, like I just have to work harder and do better. And like, how come it feels like I, I, I'm i not making traction? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, are you actually really depending on God? For mm-hmm. this? Or is this something you're trying to do in your own strength? And it's like, uh, yeah, I think a lot of times we do that. We we try to do the work that God has called us to do, good things. Mm-hmm. We try to do it in our strength. And when we do that, we will fail because... The flesh that got us in the mess in the first place is not going to get us out. Not at all. I'm going to say this sometime. I don't know when, but we're going to be talking about prayer eventually, and, and there's some other things, even drawing nigh to God. So if, mm-hmm. I, if I say this now, I'm going to say it again. But I was coming into work last week sometime and just burdened and heavy with big decisions for the church, big directions. Mm-hmm. And it was early in the morning, and I, I, I've had one of those weeks where, you know, I cry all the time. It was one of those weeks. And so, uh-huh. I was, no, you know, you know, you know how that is. That's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a baby. Stop yeah. saying I'm a baby, Dan. I didn't Dan. say it. Um, I didn't say it. But you thought it. So um, I just, I just, in, in, and I've been reading Oswald Chambers, which has really been a blessing for me, about childlike prayer and watching and waiting and talking about Hosea. And I just said out loud in the car, it was probably almost six in the morning, I said, God, I can't shoulder this. Mm-hmm. And then it wasn't an audible voice. It was like, and? Yes. Yeah. Obviously. And obviously. obviously that's not and, and that's not, we sometimes in our flesh it's like, no, just submit. Do today what you know he wants you to do. And that's a beautiful thing. Then he guides and directs us. Yeah. Absolutely. In a great way. He does. And and then when we do see victory in our lives, um, we don't take any credit. For no, it. we can't. It is it's, it's him. him. But at this in, at the same token, like we can't be, okay, God, here's my problem, here's my sin, you worked it out. <clears throat> like like the person I was talking to actually this past week, we were talking about how, like, I wake up and I want to make the right decision. Mm-hmm. And I go to work and I'm, I'm going to make the right decision. And, and I'm on my way home and I'm going to make the right mm-hmm. decision. And then I get to this point and it's like, okay, but this is where I decide. Mm-hmm. And and they were saying, like, well, why doesn't God just force me to, to do the right thing? It's like, right. Because that's the point that you take the way of escape that he provided. That's the point that you you depend on him. And if, if God just, like, took away our sinful desires. If it was just like you got saved, all of a sudden you don't want to do any of those things mm-hmm. anymore. Where do you demonstrate your love for him over right. those other things? Right? If there's if there's no other love, if mm-hmm. there's nothing else out there, right. then then how do we say, God, I love you more than the thing I used to love? That's right. And and so maybe seeing our sinful desires as opportunities to glorify God Mm -hmm. because there are so many sins I don't participate in believe it or not that I I, is I don't I'm not tempted toward them right because they don't have an effect on no so so I don't think I'm glorifying God by not doing that exactly that I don't that's not the pull right Right. but it is in the battle that yes well and that's just like any in even the physical realm without resistance there's never any growth in muscle right there has to be a resistance and it's a resistance when we're strengthened and 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 made solid yeah right so you have to have it you you go to the gym and you see some people who are like they're they're like they've got no weight on there but they're they're doing a million reps it's like yeah there's no resistance yeah so and that's and Dan, I think that goes to Philippians chapter two, where it's like work out your own salvation and fear and trembling, for it's God who works in you both the one doing good pleasure. But but we there's a there's that tension between um, submit to God, do what He says, mm-hmm. right, and then He will help you. He'll yeah. give you that grace that you need as well. He'll help you to the point that when as you resist the devil, mm-hmm. he flees. Yeah, that's an awesome thought. It is a beautiful. Thought. Um, Luther's. A mighty fortress. Mm-hmm. I was shocked because I've always said that little word is Jesus. Of course, it's and it is in in a, in a so, real way. You know what? And I what I when I every time I thought of that, I thought like that was not a little word that we speak. Mm-hmm. 
it was a little word that Jesus, any little word that he will speak in yeah, the future will thought. fell him. Yes. Well, his tongue is like a, a yes. sharp sword. So fire. I, was, I was picturing eschatology yeah. and times. Sure. So, right. Yeah. But when you said that, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, my goodness. And, and how powerful that is. If someone's a slanderer, mm-hmm. and he is, and an accuser, and you hear these things and you say, you're a liar. You're a deceiver. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't believe a word that you say. There's power in that. Yeah. Real power. Yeah, most of the growth groups would have discussed last week all about how, man, we, we choose to sin. We know that it's empty. Mm-hmm. We, we find it's empty over and over again. And yet the next time that the temptation comes along, somehow we... And it's like, that's where it's... it's No, that's a lie. That's it's a, a lie. lie. That's a lie. It will yeah. not fulfill me. No. Nope. It's not going to change, right? Mm-hmm. And, and then one more thing before we close that I thought was helpful for me with that, where Calvin talked about... Um, the true self-assessment, like knowing ourselves, we've got to contemplate the face of God mm-hmm. in the light of his holiness and then see ourselves in the light of our sinfulness. Yeah. And there's power in that. And it's not a despairing power, like, oh, I'm so terrible. No, I know my heart. And yet at the same time, I am, I am more flawed than I even want to pretend at times with more love than I could ever imagine. Self-awareness is something that very few people uh, possess. And I think it's difficult to possess. I think that you, like, you need to make a concerted effort Yes. on a regular basis to see yourself properly. And I think that's where the community of God comes in. The growth groups yeah, and, and accountability and, and people being able to speak that truth into your life. I, listen, I, you're at a growth group. We go to a growth group. We want more. We want mm-hmm. to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, but there has to be this submitting to God yes. and then be ready for the fight and engage in it. Yeah. And do you know what the shame is? I think that sometimes because we, we don't ever want to offend each other, mm-hmm. and so we would never speak a difficult truth into another person's life because we're like, ah, oh, I just don't want to rock the boat. I don't know how they're mm-hmm. going to take it, whatever. Do you know when we do speak even truth sometimes mm-hmm. into people's lives? It's when we're angry. And right. that's the worst yeah, time to do it. It is. That's right. And it's like when I look at my my relationships and my wife and my kids, and, and even though mm-hmm. sometimes... I think I'm saying true things mm-hmm. that they need to hear. Yeah. I say them when it's not the right time because oh, I'm, not, I'm not in the right Yeah, place. I've done it. I had a conversation with David years ago, and I just, blah, 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 blah. Mm. I'm watching the bedroom, and Kim said, what you said was right. The way you said it was terrible. Mm-hmm. He didn't get a word you said. Mm-hmm. And then, Dan, the, on the flip side of that, sometimes we don't want to speak truth in someone's life because it's not that we love them so much, but we love ourselves, and we don't want them to think poorly of yeah. us. Right? There's something about us. Yeah. But you're right. It has to be done. And we have to develop those relationships. And we're yeah. praying that those, and we know relationships are growing in our growth groups. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, we have sort of gone all over the place without any notes. That's, uh, right? Uh, uh, maybe. I hope you got something out of it. Because, mm-hmm. so, if nothing else, they know that you sleep with your dogs. I didn't admit to that. So, <laughs> all right. So I think it's your turn to pray. And uh, next week was communion. And we're going to hit uh, draw nigh to God. Mm-hmm. He will draw nigh to you. Mm-hmm. And then we'll finish up that section, Lord willing. Okay. All right? Okay. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I thank you. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you that we mm-hmm. can um, draw nigh to you. Mm-hmm. We thank you that as we submit to you, you empower. Uh, Lord, we are very aware of our mm-hmm. weakness and our, and our struggles and our temptations and Lord, each of us has a, a heart that is deceitful and that wanders. And uh, God, we know our hearts more likely better than the person that is next to us. And, mm. and, and um, God, it's just an amazing thing to think that the God of heaven who knows us better than we do, yeah. who knows every part of us, still loves us and is calling us to, to himself, to submit mm. to him. And that you can empower and change us and, and, and help us to overcome sin that we've battled sometimes for years. Mm. And Lord, I pray that you do that among us and that we would be helpful to one another in the process. Yeah. We love you. Lord, we thank you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dan. All right. Enjoy the uh, recap. Mm. God bless. Mm.